today, we get to see NVIDIA's RTX 4090 Ti, Intel's insanely deceptive ARC GPU benchmarks, next-gen CPUs could get to 6 GHz stock, and AMD confirms specs for their RX 7000 GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you remember a little while back, we saw some images of what was claimed to be an RTX 4090 Ti shroud. Well, in a new video from Moore's Law is Dead, he had someone take the images here and make a mock-up. And as you can see, it's pretty chunky. Now, this isn't a 4-slot GPU, it's actually 3.25, and according to Moore's Law is Dead, the GPU is likely able to get sufficient cooling from that because the 3090 Ti doesn't use the entire space for the heatsink. Either way, it looks nearly identical identical to the regular 3090 Ti. With that said, this is apparently the design of NVIDIA's engineering sample, and it's likely retooled from their current 3090 Ti. With that said, the design of the engineering sample is what NVIDIA used with the 3000 cards when those images leaked before their release, but they've also used the same cooler for two generations before. Plus, with the leaks we've seen showing that next-gen cards are very similar to the 3000 series, this is very much likely it. Time, as always, will tell. But first, a big shout out to this video's sponsor, Heroes of the Dark, the game that offers the ultimate mix of strategy and RPG, and it's available on PC, Android, and iOS. Heroes of the Dark transports you to a world of vampires, werewolves, and humans during a time of war in a place called Tenebris. Here, you collect heroes to fight by your side in both PvP and PvE combat. And I like the importance of strategy in the game. You need to think where the heroes will perform perform best due to their class, stats, and skills. In the game, you get your very own mansion that you can upgrade into the ultimate headquarters to rule your kingdom. I personally enjoy collecting new heroes and checking out their cool abilities. My favorite hero is this tanky and powerful werewolf, with his ability to regenerate 40% health during the battle. So if you're a fan of RPGs, strategy, PvP, epic quests, or really just having fun, you've got to download Heroes of the Dark. And now's the best time to do it. Just head to the link link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get a $15 vampire, Countess Magla to start. So click the link and begin your epic journey today. Next up, we have official performance numbers for Intel's high-end ARC GPUs, specifically their A730 and A770M. The issue is that it looks like Intel is up to their same deceptive practices that we've seen time and time again. According to a new report from Tom's Hardware, Intel is a new reviewer's guide for their high-end GPUs, and in it, they give these benchmarks. As you can see, Intel is comparing the ARC A730M to the RTX 3050 Ti Mobile, and the a 7 70M to the RTX 3060 mobile, and in most benchmarks, Intel's ARC GPU beats out the comparative NVIDIA GPU. With that said, there's a massive caveat to consider. First is that both of the CPUs used in the NVIDIA systems were older CPUs when compared to the ones used in Intel's. Not only that, but according to Intel themselves, their A730 comes with a TGP of between 80 and 120 watts, and the A770 gets 120 to 150 watts. The issue here is that the 3050 Ti Intel used was a 60 watt SKU, and the company didn't specify the wattage of the A730. Then the RTX 3060 was set to 85 watts. Like the A730, Intel didn't specify their own GPU wattage here as well, but even according to Intel specs, the minimum of both should be higher. So Intel literally compared their GPUs to an objectively worse system. And yes, given they're in the same class, it's fine to compare them, but Nvidia's GPUs can get higher wattage. With all of that in mind, the A730 is up to 13% faster than the 3050 Ti, and the A770 is up to 12% faster than the 3060. But as you can see, it's always best to wait for third-party reviews. Really, what's so bad about this is that Intel shared it with reviewers, so it's not meant to be public, which means they were hoping to influence reviewers. All I can say is shame on Intel for this blatant deception. Next up, it looks like Intel is going all out with their next-gen Raptor Lake CPUs. Starting things off, a new version of Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility was released, and in the release notes, Intel apparently added some new features for future platform support, like per-core and package overclock thermal velocity boost, as well as a new feature called Efficient Thermal Velocity Boost. 
Well, in a new post by known leaker Raichu and later reported by WCCF Tech, he claimed last month that a new frequency era was coming. And then just recently, he stated that we could actually see a 6 GHz turbo in ETVB, but that it won't be a normal SKU, so likely a KS model or something along those lines. Now, I do have to point out that Raichu later stated that ETVB means enhanced, but as we saw here, it should mean efficient. He could just be referring to something else, but either way, definitely take Take this with a grain of salt. With that said, he was clearly hearing something like this before, so we very well could see 6 GHz stock clocks. And lastly for today, we get more official news on AMD's next-gen RX 7000 GPUs, or whatever they end up being called. The story comes from an interview by Tom's Hardware with AMD's own senior VP, Sam, uh, this guy. And in it, he confirms a couple huge things about AMD's next-gen GPUs. For one, he states that AMD has been able to get higher clocks with their RDNA 3 architecture, while still remaining efficient. So next-gen will have higher clocks when compared to their RX 6000 and cards. But this is where things get interesting. If you remember not long ago, at the same time AMD confirmed that RDNA 3 will use a chiplet design and therefore an MCM GPU, AMD also confirmed that we should once again see a 50% higher performance per watt uplift. Well, in the interview, he states, quote, performance is king. But even if our designs are more power efficient, that doesn't mean you don't push power levels up if the competition is doing the same thing. It's just that they'll have to push them a lot higher than we will. Basically, this confirms that AMD's next-gen GPUs will in fact see higher power consumption when compared to the RX 6000 series. Not only that, but given it's so much more efficient with higher clocks and higher power consumption, we can definitely expect a huge performance jump over last gen. Plus, it helps confirm the rumors that say NVIDIA's next-gen has higher power consumption. AMD likely has at least an idea of what NVIDIA is doing with their next-gen cards, so his statement on the competition having more power draw is telling. Finally, he more or less confirms that next gen won't be getting some form of tensor core like Nvidia uses. Of course, given AMD's great work with FSR 2.0, they really may not need it. It really just depends on their ray tracing performance. Either way, AMD's next gen is shaping up to be a massive jump over RX 6000. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen GPUs, or are you more excited for NVIDIA's? Let me know down in the comments below, and definitely make sure to check out Heroes of the Dark. And as always, have a great day!